Yeah, this is sort of breaking the rules. There are no sequels yet, but it's the first horror film I went to see where I actually really wanted there to be one. This is hands down the greatest zombie movie I've ever seen. No joke. Screw Shaun of the Dead. This is a zombie movie that's got balls. It's got Woody Harrelson. What else is there to say? From beginning to end, this movie kicks my ass. I don't think I have one bad thing to say about it. It's got some quirky characters, a kick-ass intro, one of the most awesome celebrity cameos in horror movie history, and some brutal action scenes. It doesn't try to walk in the footsteps of George Romero, delivering something fresh and new. Interesting enough, this was actually written as a TV pilot. It would have been something else to see how this would have panned out on cable, given its violent nature. The Walking Dead gave us an idea, but this is so much more entertaining. So let's cut to the chase. The first character we meet and the one telling the story is Columbus, played by Jesse Eisenberg, the guy from The Social Network. None of the characters trust each other, so throughout the movie, everyone refers to themselves as the town they're originally from. Columbus was on his way to see his parents in Ohio when the zombie apocalypse took hold of the world. He has one simple explanation for how it happened. It's been two months since Patient Zero took a bite of a contaminated burger at a gas and gulp. No government cover-up, no top-secret conspiracy. The reason Columbus has survived for so long is not because of his brave heroics. What makes him such a likable character is that he's kind of a wimp. Meaning at the guts of a guppy, but... But because he has a set of rules that he follows to the T. Columbus's rules define this movie. Rule number one for surviving Zombieland? Cardio. Which leads me to my second rule. The double tap. Rule number three, beware of bathrooms. As the movie goes on, he invents new ones, and some of the old ones pop back into play, adding to the humor and creativity of this flick. It's one of those things everyone wants to see come back in the upcoming sequel. Then there's Tallahassee, played by badass Woody Harrelson. You see, he was in the ass-kicking business, and... Business is good. In fact, the only thing he was more obsessed with than killing zombies was finding a Twinkie. Again, he's this badass, gun-toting zombie killer, and yet the thing he has to have is a Twinkie. There's a box of Twinkies in that grocery store. Not just any box of Twinkies. The last box of Twinkies that anyone will enjoy in the whole universe. Believe it or not, Twinkies have an expiration date. They spend the whole movie looking for one, and at one point, they even run into a hostess truck. Snowballs? Yeah. Snowballs? Where's the fucking Twinkies? Then there are the sisters, Wichita and Little Rock, who pretty much fuck over the guys every chance they can get. And they pretty much do this all throughout the film. Oh my god. You're thinking about fucking Wichita. Hey, wish granted. She spent the last 24 hours fucking us both. For a movie called Zombieland, there are not as many zombies as one might think. Most of the bloody, gory zombie action bookends the film, with the main story chronicling these four characters who almost become a family. At first, they can't stand each other, but then they come to terms with their situation, and they kind of accept it. Yes, but no, she's not. She's not. She's only famous when she's Hannah Montana, when she's wearing the wig. Okay. And then you have the best part of the whole movie, where they go to Hollywood. Their goal later on is just to get to Pacific Playland, an amusement park where supposedly there are no zombies. While passing through, Tallahassee gets a little starstruck and decides to go to the mansion of his favorite actor. I love how they build this up. We get the giant BM on the front gates, and we're just wondering who's going to show up. It ain't Bob Marley. And then we get the pictures on the wall. Out of all the available talent in Hollywood, they pick probably the coolest guy to make a cameo. God damn it, Bill fucking Murray! I had to get that out. I don't mean to gush. Seeing Bill Murray briefly jumping back into the role of Peter Venkman to the Ghostbusters theme, even if it's just role-playing, it's just something I can't express in words. I think this was the scene that finally got the ball rolling on Ghostbusters 3. At the same time this is all going on, Little Rock reveals that she's never actually seen the original Ghostbusters, so Columbus takes her down to Murray's screening room. So while watching what is quite possibly the coolest zombie movie ever, we're treated to clips from Ghostbusters. That's just the icing on the cake. I don't want to spoil the whole cameo because it's got a really funny payoff. But do you have the idea now? For a zombie flick, you really couldn't ask for more. Of course you have to have the big zombie shootout in the end. 
Even after being fucked over several times by Wichita and Little Rock, Columbia still decides the right thing to do is to save the little bitches. They get to Pacific Playland, which of course is just swarming with the zombies, and the whole time they're just mowing down zombies while trying to save the girls, who are stuck on the Devil's Drop. It's action-packed, suspenseful, but here's the best part. The heroes actually win! In every zombie movie I've ever seen, there are never any winners. Even if the good guys survive, there's usually a tragedy and the movies never end with a feel-good mentality. They're all downers. This one ends on a pretty light note. Tallahassee finds his Twinkie and Wichita even reveals her real name to Columbus. I just had to cap off 31 days of slashers with the finest example of what a good zombie movie is. It's a standalone movie, I know, but one that really begs for a sequel. It's funny how the best movie on this list doesn't have one yet. And maybe that's for the best. Fuck no, give me Zombieland 2. Just leave out the 3D. And I know, we have one more day, so tune in tomorrow for a grand finale. Wrapping up 31 Days of Slashers, 2011. You've truly given him nothing left to lose. I haven't cried like that since Titanic. <laughs>